What's a vacation horror story that you have? Story 1. I was on an overnight ferry and got up in the middle of the night to use the toilets. They were communal, so I had to go out of my room and a few doors down the hallway. When I was done and had stepped back out into the hallway, a man turned the corner. And me being a young kid at the time, I got some bad vibes from that dude, so I didn't walk back to my room until I knew he wouldn't know which room I was in. I started walking faster and faster away, and he just followed me. At some point I started running and finally turned a corner back to where my room was. I looked back and could hear he was far behind and out of sight, so I quickly got into my room and locked the door. I just sat with my back to the door in complete silence and heard him running past the door. I didn't sleep much that night. Story 2. Not me, but a friend. A woman broke into his room through the window after climbing up the fire escape. He was on the second story and she was high as a kite. He woke up to a gun in his face, and this lady yelling, You cheated on me, you bastard! before pulling the trigger. Thankfully, she'd forgotten to load the gun. He tackled her and pinned her while calling the cops. Probably the luckiest unlucky moment of his life. Story 3. I was around 12 years old. We were fishing in the middle of a lake where my cousin hooked me in the forehead with a triple hook barbed spoon lure, feathers, and a pork rind for bait. My uncle detached most of the lure, but couldn't get the hook out, so I had to go to the ER in a tiny town. I came in with my hand over the hook, and the triage nurse asked what was wrong. I removed my hand, and she just said, oh. After I sat in the waiting room for a while, a resident came out, said I was making the other patients uneasy, and put a sheet over my head. Once they took me back, a doctor examined me, and he asked for a scalpel blade. I thought he was going to cut my forehead open to get the hook out, but he just needed to remove the pork rind. He numbed me up and pulled the hook out rather aggressively. I had to get a tetanus booster, which was fun as I have a needle phobia, and I had to get stuck twice that day. My mom and aunt still laugh about it at family get-togethers more than 30 years later. Story 4. My now ex and I went camping in a small campground in Wyoming. Even though we were warned by the guy at the gas station that the local tribes considered the spot sacred and perhaps we should reconsider. We were tired from driving all day, and there were other people there as well, so we just put up our tent and fell asleep. Everything went just fine, and the campground was lovely, so we decided to stay for some days. However, that second evening, we huddled in our tent listening to a mountain lion attacking and killing a small dog yards away from our tent. Again, another beautiful day in the woods. The other people camping around us had left, and it was just us, and we liked the solitude but there was no one else to talk to about these things that were happening. The third evening, a bunch of skunks drifted through our campsite. Not one or two, but like seven or eight of them. I never knew they traveled in herds, but they sure did that evening. Another nice day, but on our fourth evening, a bunch of hunting dogs, all beagles with numbers spray painted on their sides, ran through our camp and scattered our fire and our supper and were generally a nuisance, as were the two hunters holding shotguns who were hot on the heels of their pack. We went to bed hungry and early that night. In the middle of the night, it rained. And rained, and rained. I woke up when I drowsily hung my hand over the side of our air mattress and found we were floating. So we packed up right then and there and got far away from that place. Never returning. I want to think these things were all coincidence, but I wonder sometimes. Story 5. I went camping alone on my birthday once, like a three hour drive from where I lived. The campground was in a valley with a river cutting through it. It rained the whole weekend and was freezing. I had no warm clothes either. Also, my food all got eaten by raccoons, most likely, while I was sleeping. I spent the whole weekend trying to keep a fire going or going to the campground store to buy the insanely overpriced food they had, and the only saving grace was that I brought enough booze to kill a large family and some acid. Also, this was the first time I had taken any days off work in the two and a half years that I had been at my job. Apparently, June is the rainy season in that area, and I had no idea about this beforehand. Also, I had no internet or phone service up there, so I had no idea if it was going to stop raining or not. Story 6. I was on vacation in Greece when some stomach flu hit the town. I spent about 24 hours non-stop puking and having diarrhea in my hotel room and had to travel home the day after, where I basically felt dead. As people traveled home in groups from the hotel, I had to spend time on buses and planes with about 40 other people going through the infection. 
and so I'm sure you can imagine how fun that was on a plane with two washrooms and limited toilet paper. Story 7. I stayed at a hotel in downtown San Diego. There was a 3 inch gap under the door to our room, and it was set rather high on its hinges. The door faced out to the street. As you can imagine, there were bugs everywhere inside, and evidence of rodents being there too. At night, there was so much noise entering the room, I couldn't sleep, even with towels tucked at the base of the door. My partner is very comfortable roughing it in cheaper hotels, but that was an experience that made me finally draw the line. Now I am the one in charge of picking where we stay. Story 8. I was traveling from Oregon to Texas and went through Los Angeles. Two days before Christmas, the roads were packed. The traffic was so bad I couldn't change lanes to get to any of my exits. I wound up having to go all the way to Mexico to turn around and come back. It's a good thing I had my passport. Story 9. Was in Costa Rica last year when suddenly one evening one of my eyes started dilating. I consulted with a physician friend back home who said that it was good I wasn't having any other symptoms but I should still seek medical care and be evaluated. Went to the local clinic in La Fortuna where I was examined but told I should go to the ER in San Jose for a CT scan. It was 9pm at this point, so I drove a little over 2 hours to the ER and got the CT scan, which didn't show anything. Got discharged and drove 3 hours back to the hotel at 5am where our kids had been waiting the whole time. The next day, my wife and I tested positive for the big ol' VID. Story 10. When I was 8, my father had the wonderful idea of taking me to a nudist camp. I was sitting on the porch of our cabin when an old man came over and said, you can take your clothes off here, you know? I was wearing a fuzzy bathrobe, and when I said no, he persisted. I didn't realize how messed up this was until years later, and I now feel very stupid, but also very glad that I didn't take off that robe. Story 11. When I was 7 years old, the family was eating at a motel restaurant, and the server brought a pot of boiling water to our table. He accidentally spilled it on my arm. I obviously screamed in horrible pain. I was wearing a long sleeve shirt as well, which kept the water against my skin. My parents rushed me to a clinic, I had a large burn on my lower arm, and the nurse scraped the dead skin off before applying a cream and wrapped my arm in gauze. My parents continued driving to my grandmother's house in Indiana. For the rest of the vacation, my mom and I tended to my burn, changing the dressing regularly. The server who spilled the water on me quit. It was his first day on the job, and he felt horrible about what happened. I still have a large scar on my arm from that burn, now at 55. Story 12. I took a long flight to Italy. My girlfriend and I bought our tickets way ahead of time. We got to the ticket counter and were informed that they had no substitute planes because of mechanical problems, and our two seats didn't exist on this plane. While at the counter, I overheard the ticket agent lady talking to a standby passenger who was an American Airlines employee. We got stuck in the middle of the middle row with five people. Terrible seats. Once we got near Italy, we had to listen to the standby passengers admiring the amazing view. They had two window seats. We were crammed in the center aisle, and the big lady next to me kept farting. My girlfriend asked me three times to stop farting when it wasn't me. Absolutely miserable flight. To those of you not familiar, standby is when employees who work for the airline get basically dirt cheap plane tickets because they have empty seats. So you'll pay like 50 bucks for a $300 ticket. Standby passengers are supposed to get the dregs because they pay such a cheap price for the ticket, and in this situation that definitely should have applied. These guys got a raw deal. Story 13. Middle school field trip. Two days, one night. Four kids per bedroom. I couldn't sleep that night, so I got up and quietly checked my phone while my friends slept. We shared a king-size bed. Though the whole time I had this feeling like the walls in front of our bed were off. But I, I didn't know why. The day after, all my friends looked at each other in a very strange way, but no one said anything until we were all ready to go and on the bus. Once I asked them, all of them said they saw the same thing. They said that on the walls in front of our bed, there was a black body that looked like a guy who had been burned to a char, crawling around on the walls. They couldn't sleep either, but they were too scared to move all night, so everyone acted like they were sleeping. To this day, I still have no idea what that could have been. Story 14. A few weeks ago, I took my then-boyfriend, now ex, to Harbin Hot Springs. 
He was told it was a naturalist resort. He came anyways, and then freaked out the whole time that the women there were topless. It was incredibly embarrassing. I've been a naturalist my whole life. When we got back, he got out of the car, into his, and left without saying anything. After five months of dating. If you want to see someone's true colors, just take them on a vacation to a destination you love with a culture outside of their experience. Story 15. I was bikepacking with a new bicycle from Ulm, a city in Germany, to Pisa in Italy over the Alps. It took me 10 days, and I loved that bike. On the way back, I was traveling with a bus. The bike was mounted on the outside on a rack, and somewhere along the way, we halted and some scumbag stole my nearly brand new bike from the mounting rack. It's not like it was a particularly expensive bike. Any e-bike would have been more expensive, but it was still a really nice bike. Now we'll hop into the rapid fire segment of the video for stories too short to make a full entry out of, but too good to be left out. Let's jump in. I had an ice cream swiped right out of my hand by a seagull. Devastated. Rented a $4,000 a week place in Cape Cod. At night, it was crawling with bugs, and under the sink I found a bag filled with human hair. Had to sleep on the ground of a dirty floor because they gave away my bedroll. The frogs were so loud that we had to leave. Masses of frogs croaking is unbearable. I got pooped on by a lot, and I mean a lot of birds. Went to Jamaica with my ex-wife. She was there on the plane with me and on the island. It was bloody awful. So that's it for today, guys. Don't forget to leave your story in the comments below. I like to do viewer videos as well. I'm Redlist. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time.